Hi, my name is Julia and I'm a homeschool mom of two. In this video, we will be taking a closer look at just three out of the hundreds of science lessons available for Time for Learning students in grades kindergarten to second. In our first lesson, we're taking a look at the materials that make up the earth, rock, water, and soil, and how living things utilize them. Sit next to me. We'll finish after class. Okay. Okay, children, settle down and I will read you some limericks all about how living things use the materials that make up the earth. There once was an earthworm who roamed to find the best possible home. Though sand was too dry and rocks were too high, he was quite happy to settle for loam. That was cool. That was so cool. What's loam? I think it's dirt. That's right. It's soil that has lots of things for an earthworm to live on. Shall we go on? Yeah! 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 yeah. There once was an Time for Learning lessons use a variety of styles to keep things fresh and diverse, and I really appreciate how many lessons include animations and text. Dirt she could stand. Just the idea of mud made her ill. She looks ill. Why does it make her ill? Why do you think mud would make an ant ill? Because muddy tunnels would never work. Ha! Huh, that's right. Mud has too much water in it for an ant to move it around. Oh! Uh -huh. Try making your own, and you'll see what I mean. Click on the red, blue, and green words to fill in the parts of the limerick so it rhymes. Click on the ear any time you want to hear how it sounds. When it sounds right, click Save to keep it in your notebook. These limericks were so fun for my kiddo, but they also incorporated poetry and language arts right into the science lesson. In the dark. Listen, there once was a goat named Mark who loved to float at the park with a crash in a tree and a cat Going we, still doing the same in the dark. With huh, a pain. Great limerick. Would you like to save it? Save this. With it saved, you can check it out in your notebook anytime. Skipping ahead to the next activity in our video. Here, students will explore the characteristics of magnets and the different materials they attract. I've located it. Ready to investigate? No. Yes! I was hoping you'd say that. Let's investigate. Have you ever heard of a magnetic field? Although it may sound like a wide open area with grass made of magnetic metals like iron and steel, it's not. A magnetic field is the area around a magnet's poles that can attract magnetic metals. You can't see it, but when something magnetic gets close enough, you can see what it causes. Let's investigate how magnetic objects react to a magnetic field. We'll use two different objects. Choose the first object. Large paper clip. Okay, let's see if that'll even be attracted to the magnet. Drag it to the target and drop it to see. Large paper clip. It did! Okay, pick one more object. Small scissors. Okay, let's see if this gets pulled towards the magnet. Drag it to the target and drop it to see. Small scissors. Yep, that was attracted to the magnet too. Okay, let's list both of those objects on a data table so we can keep track of what we learned about them. We'll test these objects at three different distances from the magnet. Two centimeters, five centimeters, and ten centimeters. And now we're ready. First, we'll place your first object in the first spot, two centimeters from the magnet. When you're ready, hit Let Go, and we'll see what happens. Bright images and animation, clear instructions, and positive reinforcement when an answer is incorrect are things that I appreciate as a parent. I know my child is learning and is encouraged rather than discouraged if he needs to rewatch something. That's not quite what I observed. Do you need to watch it again? Yes. Let's place that object back on the spot, two centimeters from the magnet. When you're ready, hit Let Go, and we'll see what happens. Let Go! 
At this distance from the magnet, what did the large paper clip do? Move toward the magnet. Yep, the pull from the magnet was strong enough to attract your object at that distance. Let's put that in our table of information. Now we'll try your object at the next distance, 5 centimeters from the magnet. Now that we have all of this information in our data table, we should save it in our notebook, in case we need it later. But first, it needs a good title. Choose the one that would make the best title for this data table. A handy feature within these science lessons is the notebook. Students can save work to the notebook for future reference. That's a good choice. The title Magnetic Field Measurements will tell you exactly what kind of fun you were having and exactly what you were investigating. That's a well done data table. Hit save to keep it in your notebook. And finally, we're moving forward to the last lesson of our demo. This one all about energy. Hello there. It is I, Molly Kuhl, superhero in training, protecting all those particles that matter from the elements with my trusty sidekicks, Adam and Adam. This module guides students through an exploration of energy transformations in living and non-living systems. Morph into a gerbil. Anyway, to become a superhero, I must pass many tests. Tests of strength and agility. Tests of fortitude and will. Tests of science and math. So I'm studying for the big energy sources evaluation and here's what I know so far. Like most of the lessons, this one begins with a short introduction to the topic. First things first, energy is the ability to cause change or movement. The energy you have to run around on the playground comes from the food you eat. People and animals also get the energy they need to keep growing and growing is definitely a change, from the foods we eat. And plants don't eat food like we do, but they use energy from the sun to make their own food so they can grow and change. Let's jump to the recap at the end of the activity. The conclusion summarizes and reinforces the information that was presented in this lesson. Get it from different sources. 6. The flow of energy from the source to what uses it can be traced. <sighs> okay, I think I have this covered. Now it's time to study for the x-ray vision test. This concludes the kindergarten to second grade science demonstration. Please choose another subject, or if you'd like to learn more about how Time for Learning works, take a look at the tour video. Goodbye.